New Hope celebrated 50 years of Duck Duck Days this weekend, but the celebration turned to concern after reports of teenagers taunting police and causing fights. Organizers had to shut down the festival early on Saturday night. Reporter Meredith Hackler spoke with city leaders about what happens next for New Hope's signature festival. Meredith? Shannon, this year New Hope Police took security to a new level. They added an entry fee to get in, put up a physical barrier, added private security, and doubled the amount of officers working the event. Their hope was that all of the security would deter juveniles from attending and causing issues like they had the previous year. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case. It was a large crowd, which is manageable. Um, a few incidents uh, within that crowd would be manageable, but this was a very large crowd, mostly juveniles. There was enough of them being disorderly to cause a serious problem. Police say a large group of juveniles began fighting and taunting officers on duty. Duck Duck Days had a large amount of people attending, so many that the park was at capacity and people had to start being turned away. Once the juveniles began fighting, police along with organizers decided to shut the event down early due to safety concerns. One council member says they are dedicated to keeping Duck Duck Days around in the years to come, but there may have to be even more changes to prevent this from happening again. There will be a number of meetings, I assume. Uh, this isn't something that's going to be solved in one meeting. Uh, but there is the commitment and the dedication by the Lions City of New Hope to really make sure that uh, this is continually successful, whatever it turns out to be. Elder went on to say several of the juveniles causing issues were not from New Hope or the immediate area. He also believes they came with the intention to disrupt, and they did. A total of 10 disorderly conduct citations were written. However, no one was injured. Shannon. All right, thank you, Meredith. Many recent headlines have focused on immigration raids. Minnesota wasn't on the list for this recent round of raids, and officials in one of the most diverse cities in the Northwest Metro say its police force will not cooperate with immigration and custom enforcement agents. Brooklyn Park Mayor Jeff Lundy says this has always been the case. For us, nothing has changed. Uh, we've always said that we do not enforce immigration law. That is a federal issue. And so our police department has never, will not, and nothing in the future, be actively involved with helping ICE or any federal agency enforce, whether it's immigration or any federal law. Brooklyn Park Police and staff are not allowed to take any actions to report, arrest, or detain people because, just because of their immigration status. Over half of the population in Brooklyn Park is non-white. According to the city, 20% of residents were born outside of the United States. Mayor Lundy says immigrants should not be afraid to interact with police or to contact police when a crime has been committed. If a person is a victim of a crime, no matter what their status in society, that they should feel comfortable calling our police department reporting that crime. The mayor also says city officials are reaching out to different ethnic community groups to help spread the message. We are entering the season of the year when farmers markets are teeming with fresh produce. Fresh in-season vegetables and much more were on display at SEEP in Brooklyn Center on Friday for the first Farm Fresh Fest of the season. It's the fourth year that SEEP has offered the food to the community in a farmers market atmosphere. We go every other Friday from July to November, and it is really our way to celebrate our community in the summer and in the harvest season through fresh produce, community partnerships, kids' activities, and um, some, some music and some good times. Anyone who lives in Brooklyn Center or Brooklyn Park is invited to attend every other Friday from 4 until 6 p.m. at SEEP on Brooklyn Boulevard. Brooklyn Center Municipal Liquor Stores are getting some major kudos. The city operates two off-sale liquor stores and they recently received two honors. The Minnesota Municipal Beverage Association awarded Brooklyn Center a Best Business Development Award for its new Customer Rewards Program. The city also took home a national award from Beverage Dynamics, which named Brooklyn Center Liquor a Top 100 Retailer. And this was for kind of overall, it wasn't for any one specific program, mm -hmm. but it was for our BC Bucks rewards, it was for our rare beer releases, different events that we do like our um, uh, Red, White and Brew, uh, things like that. 
Brooklyn Center opened its first municipal liquor store back in 1949. Next year, the Xerxes Avenue store will be moving to a new location, which is about two blocks away on Shingle Creek Crossing. A change is coming this week to local Lunds and Byerly stores. The last day the pharmacies inside of the stores will be open will be Tuesday, July 16th. This pertains to all 24 stores in the Twin Cities, including the stores in Maple Grove, Plymouth and Golden Valley. A statement on the store's website says the pharmacies have been losing money and it's no longer feasible to operate them. All pharmacists and pharmacy staff will lose their jobs. Prescriptions not picked up will be routed to the nearest Walgreens store. A new mural in Rogers pays tribute to the city's past. We have been talking about it for probably four or five years of doing something to dress up the building and represent Rogers of the old days. Work on this mural alongside the Antiques 101 building finished up in June. The mural showcases the various businesses along Rogers Main Street in the 1920s. The piece was done by former resident Jean McFarlane, who now lives in Maple Grove. McFarlane is a customer of the antique shop and she thought it was the perfect place to showcase a part of Rogers history. The store's owners say it's an important tool to help preserve the city's past. We all came from some place we should respect where we came from and respect the, the people that went through all the hard times to get us to where we are now. The mural took about a month to complete. McFarland received help from the Rogers Historical Society and Lions Club to come up with the design. The 16 Gopher Classic American Legion Baseball Tournament is whittling down teams with the tournament championship coming up Tuesday afternoon. Wyzetta faced Maple Grove in a pool play round game Sunday evening. Bottom of the first in Maple Grove's Jeremy Click sends a ball to left center field that drops for a hit right center field. Brady Hubbard comes around third and slides in with the first run of the game. It's 1-0 after one. Wyzetta answers when Nick Kay drives one deep to left. This one hits near the base of the fence. Both Charles Engdahl and Keegan Nickel score on Cage double to give Wysetta a 2-1 to one lead. Later in the same inning, Wysetta looking for more runs, but a nice defensive play here by Maple Grove. They quickly turn the 6-4-3 double play to end the inning. Maple Grove ties the game in the bottom of the fifth. Click at the plate, draws a bases loaded walk. Nathan Ross scores and it's 2-2. This game goes to extra innings and after Wysetta scores an unearned run on the top of the eighth inning, they win it in the bottom of the eighth. Brendan Albert gets the strikeout to end the game. 3-2 Wysetta is the final, advancing them to today's playoff round where they beat Shakopee 5-3 and are playing Excelsior at this taping of CCX News. At Robbins Hills Woods Bang Days, the Osseo Maple Grove Blazers faced Irondale in the tournament championship for the 14-15 year old bracket. Bottom of the first, Irondale's Walter Patterson slices a hit to the left field fence. Leroy Vardez scores and they take a one to nothing lead after one inning. Irondale pitcher Sam Franzen was tough to hit off. He gets a strikeout to end the top of the second inning, stranding two Osseo Maple Grove runners on base. Top of the fourth, the Blazers' Sam Wolkerstofer singles down the line and gets out to left field in a hurry. Ben Ruth and Tyler Becker score, and Osseo Maple Grove is up 2-1. to one. The Blazers' Reed Lewis strikes out seven Irondale batters in four innings of pitching to keep the game close. It's 2-2 two -two after six. Top of the seventh inning, and Becker's. Breaks the tie for Osseo Maple Grove with a hit just inside the third base bag. Sam Newman hustles around to score on Becker's double. They'd add another run, and they lead it four to two after six and a half. Irondale scores a run and loads the bases in the bottom of the seventh when Becker stops the ground ball at third base, reaches for the bag, and gets the final out of the ball game. And the celebration is on. Osseo Maple Grove wins the ninth annual Whizbang Days tournament four to three. White Bear Lake won the 19-year-old division title. The five-day USA Cup soccer tournament gets underway Tuesday morning at the National Sports Center. One local team claimed a championship Sunday in the three-day USA Cup weekend tourney. The Fusion FC Select team from Plymouth won the boys' 17 Red Division 
Parker Voida scored the match's only goal on that penalty kick. Fusion wins 1-0 over a team from Sioux City, Iowa. The players got first place medals and the team received a trophy. We'll have more on the USA Cup week-long tournament throughout the week here on CCX News. It was a bull riding bonanza at the 39th annual Hamill Rodeo. CCX Sports' Jay Wilcox caught the sights and sounds of the performances in Corcoran. We're glad they're with us here tonight as well, our visiting royalty. Let's come on. Here he goes. Here's his chance right there. Oh, oh he was flying down. He can hear you. What about this? That cap from getting up. He watches the work. Cody Huber. Got him. Now watch him do the work. He's back up. Get in there. Now the horse is going to keep the rope tight while he ties him up up here. Yeah. That ain't right. In Hardin, Montana, here the horse has been won the Extreme Bronx in Jordan. Great horse. Great cowboy coming out of the race. Will actually leave the Cowboys after two. It looks good so far.